Wind power now provides close to 8% of electricity in the United States and it's growing fast. But new research out of Harvard suggests that in the short term anyway, wind power could warm the climate. We're joined now by David Keith, Professor of Engineering and Public Policy at Harvard University. Uh, originally a Canadian, grew up in Ottawa, spends about a third of his time in Alberta. Great to have you here. Um, so Great to be here. You're at pains to, to, to note that this is not an indictment of wind power, but you, it is a factor that should be considered. Can you tell us how would wind power actually warm the climate? Sure, maybe the big perspective first. So, I mean, any energy systems uh, are going to have environmental impacts. And as we move off fossil fuels, as we have to do if we want a stable climate, um, we have to think about the environmental impacts of the new technologies we're moving towards. And one of the big facts about many renewables is they use a lot of land. So, a fundamental thing uh, uh, in our data is that wind takes really, I think, more land than people expected uh, and uh, much less land, say, than solar. And in doing that, it actually disturbs the flow of, of winds. And that has some local effect and actually larger effect as wind power gets bigger and changing the climate, particularly warming at night. Uh, and so from our point of view, this is one of the things that needs to be considered when we think about the trade-offs between low carbon technologies. Now, you say over the, I mean, over centuries, over the very long term, wind will, certainly compared to fossil fuel, have a beneficial effect when it, when it comes to reducing uh, climate, uh, sorry, warming. For sure. Uh, I, I think the issue isn't really exactly how to compare them. The issue is to think seriously about the relative environmental impacts of different low carbon technologies. So some things like, say, large scale use of biofuels or I think hydropower are pretty unlikely to be scalable to the kind of scale of, of modern human energy use without really huge environmental consequences. So my vote would be to not do much of those. Uh, to me, the things that are most scalable in the sense that we really could supply a significant fraction of global energy with them with pretty low environmental footprint are solar power or nuclear power. And I think, you know, this new research suggests that wind power in lots of ways is in the middle. It has a much larger land area requirement than does solar, 10 times larger. And it has these, uh, one of its local environmental consequences is local climate change, which from the perspective of somebody who lives at a wind plant or a uh, an animal that lives at a wind plant, that is actually larger than the benefits for a long time, for roughly a century. That's what you touch on nuclear. I see the French are now talking about bringing down their percent of electricity from nuclear. It, in many ways, it looks like nuclear is going backwards these days. That, that's clearly true. Uh, uh, and right now, despite all the efforts to cut emissions, the fraction of global energy that comes from fossils is hardly changing. But I think in the long run, we will move off fossil fuels. We, we, we can do it. And the enormous progress in cost performance of solar is stunning. And I think mm -hmm. people can figure out ways to make nuclear power work if they really want to. Uh, I think the issue and, and the issue this research speaks to is how we make choices as society decarbonizes between different low carbon energy sources, all of which have some impact. There's no perfectly free lunch, all of which in general have less impact than fossil fuels. But but we need to think seriously about the impacts they do have, because doing things at the scale that we now use energy, like uh, using, say, enough wind power to generate a third of the world's total energy needs in 2050 will have really large environmental impacts. So we need to understand them better. David, we'll have to leave it there. I'm sorry we don't have time, um, um, more time with you, but we'd love to have you back soon to talk about carbon capture because you're doing tremendous okay. work there. You're a founder of Carbon Engineering, uh, working on carbon capture. Uh, always great to have Harvard's David Keith join us.